Welcome to Everything Arsenal. Two signings complete fast up recently. We've signed Marquinhos from Sao Paulo and expected to be announced soon is Fabio Vieira from FC Porto. So how can Arsenal line up with both players in the same team? Let's take a look at it. First up, let's start with their best positions on the pitch. For Marquinhos, he usually plays on the right side, so we'll have him there on the right side. And for Vieira, he starts as the number 10. But the problem with having them in their best positions is that you drop Bukayo Saka and Martin Odegaard. Not just any players. Saka won Arsenal's best player last season and Odegaard finished number two. So those are the two best players from Arsenal last season. And to, to, to even be fair, Saka has been the best player for like three years. So you can't really drop them from that position to field in the new player. So the next thing we can do is to try and look for a position for Vieira first. So Vieira can also play on the left side. Vieira can also play on the left side. That is the same position that Martinelli and Smithrow have always been playing as well last season. And Smithrow can also play as a number 10. Now, I'd not be surprised if that is where we see Vieira for most of the time. Let's not forget we're in a lot of competition so we could still find um, a few areas. So we'll try and look for another position for Vieira, but he also plays on the left side. Whenever he plays for FC Porto, he usually plays as a number 10 or sometimes on the left wing. This is a formation from one of FC Porto's games last season. Vieira played on the left side in a 4-4-2 formation. So I don't really think there's a huge difference between uh, the, yeah, I think there's a huge sorry, I think there's a huge difference between the 4-4-2 and the 4-2-3-1, but I don't think there's a huge difference in terms of the role he plays. In fact, I think it's easier playing in that formation in a 4-4-2. Playing on that left side is harder than playing on the left side in a 4-2-3-1. In a 4-2-3-1, you have an extra midfielder in midfield. But in the 4-4-2, you have two forwards and only four midfielders. You have to work twice harder. So if you can play in a 4-4-2 on the left side, you can definitely play in a 4-2-3-1 on the left side. So we found a position for Vieira. The next thing is to find a position for Marquinhos. Marquinhos has also played as a number 10. So if we filled him there, it, 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 it looks good, but again, remember you can't drop Odegaard from that position. So the two roles that Marquinhos can play on the right side and on the as the number 10 are already taken. So unfortunately, we might have to have Marquinhos on the bench, unfortunately. Um, the other role that Vera has been playing for FC Porto or has played for FC Porto before is as a striker. So we we'll leave Marquinhos as a number 10 for now, but for Vieira as a striker, yes, he can play in that position, but I am hoping we don't have to see him as a striker. Let's hope we get two or three strikers this transfer window and you don't have to see Vieira as a striker. Let's play him where he's supposed to be played. So those are their favorite roles and where they can actually play. I've just used that formation because that's the one that you use most of the time in the 4-3-3. I'll not take a look at other formations. So... The next thing I take a look at is how our first team might look like. So there's two positions I've left empty. Um, I'm hoping it's going to be Tillemans in midfield next to Patton Odegaard. And I'm hoping it's going to be Gabriel Jesus up front with Saka and Vera. So that is what I expect to see next season. I would not be surprised if you saw this. Obviously, we still expect a few more players to be signed. So Tommy Asso on the right, Tierney on the left, Gabriel and Ben White, and then Pate, Odegaard, Tillemans hopefully, then Vieira on the left, Saka on the right, and up front, Gabriel Jesus. That would look strong. All of a sudden, remember, we, there's a lot of competitions next season. Europa League, Premier League, FA Cup, Carabao Cup, there are five subs allowed in the Premier League. You have to have a very, very strong team. I'll talk about that later on in the video as well. You have to have a very strong team. A team like Liverpool last season, Man United out there, Diaz can play. Salah not there, Jota can play. Fabinho can't play, Henderson is there. Man City, they sub off Myers, they bring in De Bruyne. They sub off Bernardo Silva, they bring in Gundogan. You have to have a lot of good players in those positions, not one or two. Last season, anytime our player got injured, we had 16 years on the bench. We do not want that. So all of a sudden, if you have a squad like that on the bench, you have another strong bench. You'll have Martinelli on the bench, Smith on the bench, Pepe if he stays, he will be there as well. Edin Kete is there. Granit Xhaka is there, El Nene, Tavares, let's not forget about Saliba, whoever is going to start between him and White, Cedric, there's other players I've left out, someone like Holding um, could be there, although I do expect him to leave, there's other players coming back from loan deals and loan spells, uh, Torreira probably will be sold, but he's still part of the team, uh, the likes of Niles, and if we buy more players, just imagine that team, and you throw in another striker, or you throw in someone like a Rafinha on the wing, and then you throw in another midfielder. All of a sudden, that looks 
very, very strong. So that is a potential lineup. Now let's look at how uh, the full squad um, in general. So uh, we are not focusing on the defense, so forget about the defense. Um, for, for the first, the, the top five uh, positions, the front three, and then the next two, forget about party as well. If you have Xhaka and Tillemans, Tillemans is the one starting and then Xhaka coming from the bench. Hopefully that is how it should be. Uh, but I do have a feeling Xhaka will still be starting for us next season. Uh, I've, I've started like, um, I've stopped thinking about that. Um, Xhaka leaving us. I have, I have a feeling that he'll be here until he retires. Let's just forget about selling him. Um, so Xhaka and Tillemans. And then as a number 10, Odegaard and Vieira. Now, if you have like a Liverpool today and then you have a tough game in the Europa League on Thursday and then the next weekend you have like a West Ham, you wouldn't be worried about having to start Odegaard in all 10 of those games, all three of those games that week, all 10 of those games that month. No, you, you can mix it up, you can rotate. And Vieira can actually do the, 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 the job from the bench. Last season for FC Porto, he only started 15 out of those 27 games. 15 of them is where he started, 12 of them he came from the bench and he still managed all those assists and goals. So that is very admirable. Um, on the left, you have Martinelli and Smith Rowe uh, and Smith Rowe just like we had last season. And then on the right, you see there's a lot of players on the right. Saka, Pepe, Marquinhos. If all of them, if Pepe stays and all of them, uh, Marquinhos doesn't get loaned out, Again, that is very strong. I'll be very confident with that. Saka doesn't have to play every single game, especially the Carabao Cup games and the FA Cup games that we had to use in last season, like against the Nottingham Forest or something. Marquinhos can play in such kind of games in the Carabao Cup. Pepe can start as well if he stays. There's a few other youngsters like Nelson returning. Let's not forget. And then up front, Gabriel Jesus, Nketiah, and hopefully another striker. Nketiah, yes, he wants to start in the Premier League, but there's a lot of other competitions. With us being back in the Europa League, he can easily start. All, both of those players can easily start more than 20, 20 games each. Jesus can play like 35 and Keta can still get another 25 because if you reach fine in the Europa League, that's more than 10 games. FA Cup, that's more than five games. If you reach far, Carabao Cup, more than five games. We get far as well. So those are enough games. So if you have two players in each position like that and three in other positions, other players I've not even mentioned, you are looking strong. You are definitely looking strong. But what we've learned from this one is Marquinhos will probably not be starting for us unless it's the cup games. Vieira can possibly end up starting for us. And I'd love to see Vieira and um, Odegaard in the same team. So let me know what you think of that. Hopefully it's going to be announced soon. Hopefully we get more strikers into the door and more players. And then we are looking strong for next season. So welcome to Arsenal to this guy Vieira, I've still not gotten used to calling him Vieira, but welcome to Arsenal and also welcome to Arsenal Marquinhos. Now, if you're watching this on YouTube, on screen right now, just somewhere here, I'll put a video talking about who actually is or who Fabio Vieira actually is. So click on that and take a look at it. Thank you for watching and I'll catch up with you guys on the next one.